What I'm going to do with this presentation is give you an overview of the research that we've been doing as part of the Beckley Imperial Research Program over the last uh, seven years or so. So what about the brain network effects of psychedelics? Well, again, like I said at the beginning, I just want to give you a flavor of this, really, an overview. And sometimes an image can say a thousand words, and really this has been one of our most popular images because it kind of does that. So we found that, for example, looking at communication patterns in the brain, you see a much more um, open, um, sort of fluid, flexible style of communication going on in the brain uh, under psilocybin, under also LSD, than you do during normal conditions. Also, this idea of a calm after a storm. And really, um, when we look at the, the um, fMRI results um, from our depression work, this analogy actually seems to work quite well, at least at this stage on a theoretical level. But the new and intriguing thing for us is when we look at the brain the next day. And what we saw was a very clear and, and crisp sort of reformation, if you want, of the structure of the default mode network. But what was curious was that we saw these regions proximal to the default mode network that were becoming recruited into it. So it wasn't so much that the default mode network was sort of tightening as it would in depression. It was more that it's, it was sort of expanding. Its spatial extent was broadening. And this is curious, and it was actually contrary to what I predicted and I, I think probably the rest of the team. Uh, we thought that there might be a residue of the acute state, this disintegration that you see acutely. But if you think about this carefully, this makes sense because after the uh, acute effects of a psychedelic have worn off, they've worn off. You're no longer in the psychedelic state. So there's actually something both reassuring about this and also something which may, well, should um, drive us to advance and update our explanation of things. Just one sort of idea that might explain this is that post-treatment, this sense of a, of a calm um, that patients report after their experience may fit with this, this notion of having a sort of broader headspace, being less tied up and wrapped up in the minutiae, the details of things, and mulling over why we're so terrible, for example, and why everything's so pointless, and instead just having a sort of broader kind of perspective on things, this calm. And what would support that, actually, is that when we did a binary split, looking at those patients who responded versus the, those who didn't, it was actually the responders that saw this expansion of the default mode network post-treatment. Uh, images from Neil Roseman, who's going to talk to you as well during this conference.